And as John scratches his eyes, we are live with episode eight of Let's Grill. John, John, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah. How are you? I'm okay. What's what's been going on this weekend? You gone for any other big big walks? Yeah, I did a long long walk yesterday with my parents actually, but um, Saturday was helping out my dad. My dad's doing a lot of my dad can't is is just incapable of not doing anything, so he's doing a lot of work in the garden at the moment and uh, claims that he can no longer mix concrete. So he had me mixing loads of concrete. So I was a broken man on Saturday. I see. Yeah, my my parents are the same. I um I'm still delivering groceries to them once a week, and um yeah, he had me uh shoveling manure the other day which was he gets he's had three tons of manure delivered during lockdown so far for what, what's what he doing it? i mean it's a decent sized garden but it's also probably excessive but i mean you get these big sacks and then I've, i had to sort of go in with like a like a mini pooper scooper type thing and just sort of shovel it into a barrow to take round to him to then spread over Brilliant. the uh over the plants but you know what well, else am I going to do in lockdown, right? You've got to anyway. get your, uh, your reddish tinge from somewhere, haven't you? Well, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've, uh, I think I caught the sun again yesterday. The back of my neck, I, I, I look kind of south from the subcontinent, really. It's, uh, it's getting a bit much. But anyway, um, Leonard Barden. Tell, t- tell me what you know about Leonard Barden. Absolutely nothing. Really? Okay, well, he is the... Evening Standard um, chess correspondent it has been for a number of years, something like 60, maybe even more than that. Uh, it's the longest running chess column in the world. And yeah, he is, um, he's one, remember he talked about those symbols that the English juniors did, like he ran English junior chess for a long time. Mm. And so he would have been the contact to get Karpov and Spassky and all these guys in to do these simultaneous exhibitions. But he could also play. And this is a game, actually it's a correspondence game, but it is quite a fun game that he played in 1945. So we're going to have a little look at this. And then, as usual, as we go along, I'm going to grill you on various bits of the game. So Barden is playing black in this uh, in this game. And we have your standard... So, uh, whatever it is, Italian. You have your standard Italian game. Now, black here played knight, uh, Barden player played knight to f6. Do you know what this potentially invites, this move, knight to f6? What does this maybe invite? I guess you could bring your knight down to g5 and attack f7. Lovely. So we've got these this 2v1 here where, do you know what this is called? It's got a very uh, strange name. I don't know. I usually swear when I fall into this trap, but I don't do it so much now. Well, it's not a trap at all, actually. It's absolutely fine for black, but black needs to play accurately here. It's called um, it's called the fried liver. So it's called the fried liver for for a line that exists where if um, black goes wrong then it starts to become very sour their position uh kish and patney in the chat is already asking how leonard isn't knighted yet i think they'll probably deal with that on on thursday with episode 19 because the reason we're covering leonard barden is because chris is going to make him part of his christery this week so we may find out why he's not being knighted then he may have refused it i have no idea chris will tell us anyway john so we've got the 2v1 here how what's the only way that Black can interrupt the uh, passage of these pieces so that f7 becomes safe. I think bringing the queen into play. If you bring the queen into play, then it doesn't really help because you don't want to. This you yeah, can't true. then take because the knight will just get you back and you get a queen for two. Yeah, so you got to drop and drop your knight onto d. Oh no, because it's not free it's there. It's not there. Yeah, this is the mm. issue. It's the only way. Um, let's go through your normal thing so we've got we've got these attacks you put, so you've you got, 
You can push push the D pawn. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So pawn to D five, absolutely fine. You've interrupted one of them and you've also developed with tempo. So you've let this guy out. The queen has a few more squares. You've got a decent center. Here's the, here's the rub. Here lies the rub. So if pawn takes and then knight takes. Now um, white has this amazing trick with knight takes f7. And this is the fried liver proper. Where if black takes back, can you see what white now has available to them? Um, yeah, I guess you can drop you can drop your queen down and bring and, and check the king on where. Hmm. Yeah, on 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 the F file. F three. Yeah, good. Because you've got this pin already, so it makes sense to um, put pressure on pinned pieces. And this is what White can do. And objectively it's actually it's again one of these where king has to go to e6 to defend it because it's a fork as well um but then white can continue to pile up and just get lots of pieces in the game and yeah black's just got black okay black's got an extra piece but this king is just a the... long term and it if black survives this they have done extraordinarily well so yeah, this is the issue with knight takes d5, which means that black needs another move here. So what else might exist? Hmm. So the main theme of this game and of the black's response to the fried liver normally is basically giving up this pawn in exchange for play, in exchange for getting some pieces going. So. While you're thinking about that, I'll deal with the other question in the chat. Um, fried liver games, I think there's been a few uh, recently, but mainly in rapid play. I've seen a few in the world in the world rapid play where black goes down this uh, goes down this line. But yeah, everyone really just plays three bishop c5. I think that's the main thing here. Anyway, John, talk to me. Well, you're going to lose your knight if you don't move it. Yeah, so where are we going to go to? How can we move that knight with tempo? Attack the bishop? Yeah, so, so knight to a5. A5. It looks like a bad square, but it's it's doing a thing. It's gaining you time. And it means that black can maintain this lead in development they're going to get. So bishop b5 check, c6. Takes, takes. Okay. So... Yeah, black is a pawn down, but has all the the play. Both bishops have good things. This knight is now a bit misplaced, it's very misplaced. It's made two moves without really doing anything. Bishop is still under attack. And yeah, what's going to happen here is that, um, as you can see, white is just completely undeveloped, barring these two pieces. And Black's main strategy here is to try to get play in exchange for that pawn, or to just gradually try to overrun, use the the extra tempi they're going to have while White develops these guys. Okay, so Queen to f3 was played by Mr. Young or Ms. Young, I don't know. In this uh, correspondence game, it doesn't say. Right, so why? Queen f3, what's the... Uh, I mean, surely this bishop just goes, doesn't it? Protecting the, the rook, that pawn, so... Um, okay, so the pawn is nominally pinned. Okay. Yeah. Because pawn takes bishop, then queen takes rook. So, let's deal with some options here. We've got... Okay. So when we're attacked, which we are actually now, this is also 2v1. So what are our options? Remember, they begin with A, B, C, D, E. So we've got a void, which would be no good. We well, can't do it because it's just a uh, check. 
block? Any point in blocking the queen? What would happen? No, you'd just lose your pawn. Yeah, I think if we play pawn to e4, then knight would get it. If we play queen d5, then... Well, actually, that would make no sense from a, a sort of practical perspective, because here... You swap them off. You're swapping queens off when you're a pawn down. And this would not sort of come under the umbrella of using your pieces wisely to try to recoup back any... Um, recoup back any... Um, material because black is going to have to use their pieces including the queen to try to make things happen so we can't block what was c in our little list what's what's c yeah what does c stand for we've got avoid block oh. and then counter attack good so we'll, we'll come back to that d is defend now you don't really want to be making any defensive moves here i suggest um I mean, I don't know, something like Queen B6 might make a bit of sense, but I don't know, I don't think you've dealt with the, the issue. I don't think this is really in the sort of spirit of the um, of what we're trying to do here. I don't think the Queen's on particularly good square here. Um, eat. Well, can't eat the Queen, but we could eat the Bishop, so we'll get to that. And actually, eat and counterattack are going to be the same move here, because the correct move is to take this Bishop and give up the rook. Now, why is this plausible? Why is this possible? Let's just go back to this position. Think about what has happened here. So what, what talk to me about Giving up your rook for a bishop when you're already a pawn down. You're breaking very... up a little bit. I'm struggling to hear you. Okay. I think I've got some... Probably got some internet issues. It's just fairly typical for this house. How about that, John? The question. Uh, okay, so... Let me just... I'm just going to try and make this connection work a bit better. Bear with me, sorry. Okay, how's that? Any better? Uh, that seems, yeah, seems okay. Lovely. Um, so I'm thinking that what, what we've got to try and do here is move the bishop into a position where it's threatening something so that the, the queen is under attack. Yeah, but we still don't want to swap queens. We've now given up a rook mm. and rook and a pawn for a bishop. Um, I think my, my main, the main thrust of my question is why is it possible that White Black can give up this rook for this bishop. Because presumably you're going to get a piece in exchange. Well, well, I mean, no, it's mainly just because when we talk about activity, Black needs to get some activity to get going against White's setup here. And this rook is doing has done nothing. This rook has just sat in the corner, done nothing. Whereas this is one of Black's, uh, one of White's most active pieces. So essentially, what you're doing is you're swapping an active piece for an inactive piece, and it doesn't really matter that you've given up the rook for the bishop. Um, so now white only has, well, we already said that this knight is not much cop, and, the, and this queen is now stuck in the corner, and black has two active pieces already, and as we said before, all of these guys have good roots out to make things happen. So yeah, now we need to. If you you can't really move this bishop because White will just swap the queens. So let's just play a sensible developing move and try to make the most of these pieces. The only White active piece is being a bit silly. You got a pawn hanging on a7. Good. So can we so develop could... with tempo to defend that? Yeah, you could pop your bishop on c5. Lovely. Here we go. So this is stuff that's going to happen okay knight e4 with a fork knight takes e4 queen takes e4 now white objectively again pretty much all the games we look at are sort of pre-1960 or pre like opening theory and pre any kind of objective analysis but the point as we've, we've talked a lot about on the podcast um about sort of the honourable way to play being this sort of sexy chess. 
where you're not going to um, just defend for the sake of it. And this is like a perfect example where white objectively is doing very well, but they need to get unraveled. Otherwise, black is just going to overrun them with all these active pieces. So what did black play here to continue the story? The um, the diagonal from A7 to, to G1 looks fruitful if you can get the bishop and the queen on it. Mm -hmm. Um you can also bring your out of place knight into play a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You could castle, uh, get the rook into play, and maybe. I guess that pawn's hanging as well, so we need to do something about that. Okay. So, how can you do something about. How can you merge all of these things into a decent plan? Um, is there any way you can keep their king out in the open and stop them from castling or is it, is it just they're just going to castle in the next move yeah I think white's probably going to be able to castle whatever you do because if you don't deal or if you don't at the very least make sure the queen can't take the pawn then um I mean, something like f5, for example, would just bleed to this, and then, yeah, you're in check, and then the, the king, white king, would probably castle next move anyway. So, let's assume that white is going to castle next anyway. Mm. Well, it seems as though you've got everything going down the queen side at the moment for black. Mm -hmm. um, and. And it seems as though the black, the, the white is going to end up on the king's side after castling. Okay. So I, I guess a good plan would be to start shifting your material over. Maybe. Mm. Alternatively, you can get your um, white squared bishop, light squared bishop, onto the long diagonal, mm -hmm. and then you're causing, a, you're potentially causing problems because you're going to force the queen to have to move, so they can't castle. And if the queen moves, then you can take the um, the pawn. Yeah, so this is a, this is definitely rook. a long-term plan, but we do need to deal with this guy first. We've had a suggestion in the chat of queen g5. Um, the idea being, I suppose, that if White Castle is here, then um, this looks tasty because you are you have this, and if the Queen moves out of the way, then Queen takes G2 as mate. Unfortunately, just fails to D4, where in the first instance you've put your Bishop on this, you put your Queen on the diagonal of the Bishop, mm -hmm. and the tactics just about work here for White. So Queen G5 is an interesting try, but the, the best move here as always, is the simplest, generally. And the castling makes sense here, because what happens if queen takes e5? Then you go on the long diagonal. No. Nope. Oh. oh, you can pin the, yes, can pin the queen to the king. Yes, we win king. the queen. So that does both jobs. It gets brings a piece into the game. It's And, well, see, it does a third job, of course, of... Uh, Ensuring that the black king is safe and it protects the pawn indirectly as well. So yeah, white castle is here. And rook to e8. So we're just getting all of our pieces into the game. And white's queen side is just there's nothing going on over there. And he continued, white continued here to not develop pieces. D3 is just very simple and probably very good. Starting to... For a start, as you said, undermine this knight a bit. This knight has blacks um, as an extra minor piece. Isn't doing anything, and it would be even more, even uh, worse here. But the main thing that white's going to, what problem that white's going to have if they don't get on with it is tempo. 
and black's, black's attack just happens very quickly here. So queen e2 was played, which is just a bizarre move, really, uh, in the context of the position. And black just gets on with it. Bishop b7. White grabs another pawn, which is just a very dangerous thing to do. Black defends everything with bishop b6, but just look at what's going on here. These two bishops are raking down the board. And this queen is white's only active piece still. d3 finally, but it's a, it's a bit late. Okay, now what? How are we going to continue our attack? Mm, I guess the, um, the the queen is almost stuck, at least stuck to the rook because you don't want to give that rook up and then obviously checkmate. Um, I guess the, the knight's pretty useless at the moment, so we could start bringing the knight into play. Could do. Could but push you, the pawn. But if you bring it in, you're going to be blocking this bishop a bit, aren't you? Mm. I, 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 I suppose it still has a nice square on d4. But, um, yeah, we need to be quick here as black. We need to start... I mean, what's the weakest square around the white king? Weakest in terms of what the white or black? Right. Okay. So yeah, this is this is the question. So really, we're looking at these two. Okay. Um, which of those is the weakest nominally? Um, a, uh, the the H file. Do you think the H pawn? This is the one we want to go after. Which one is it going to be easiest to go after? Think of it in that way. Sorry, you're breaking up a bit again. I bet you, I bet you my, my uh, parents-in-law are using the microwave or something stupid like that. The microwave? Yeah, it interrupts the signal apparently. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Which of these is going to be easiest to attack? All oh, right. Well, that's different. Um, well, it's the I same guess. thing, though. Which is weak? Yeah, I suppose so. Which is weakest, and which is going to be easy for you well, to attack? I think the the G pawn. Yeah. Why? Because you've already got the um, the diagonal mm -hmm. in, in, into it. The pawn on E five is blocking the diagonal into the uh, H pawn. Good. Um, that's one other very good reason associated with this bishop it's not just about what black is best place to attack it's also what white isn't best place to defend there is no light squared bishop for white it mm. died here so it's very hard for white to get pieces defending the light squares here and this is going to be chiefly amongst them so let's go after this pawn how can we try to make that happen uh, you get, mm, I can't move your queen though well no you can't could you I'm just nervous about that queen and the rook, that's all. Mm -hmm. And so deal, with, deal with all these things at once. Move the rook. Right. To... It doesn't seem very useful. Okay. Where are we going to put it? E6, I said. E6. Yeah. Yeah. Swinging. This rook is going to swing. Okay. So, rook E6, king H1. And then... You can just continue doing what you're doing, right? Yeah, if you play rook 
straight away though you're going to allow white to because this king moving to h1 has unpinned that pawn from the bishop so we need to get on with it again here how can we do you just that? take the g pawn with the bishop and sacrifice it beautiful here we go right forced mate coming up so king takes g2 keep going keep bringing your pieces in Queen to hmm. Well, presumably, the, the, he's not going to send his queen back. Sorry, king back into onto the back rank now. We're trying to we're gonna try stop it. Yeah. Or at the very least, put it, make sure it goes in the corner so we can start having a go. One good rule here, a nice rule of thumb, is that if you stack a bishop, it's nice to try to put your queen on that same diagonal to replace it, basically. So you stripped away the pawn. Yeah, that was my thought. Yeah, so queen a8 is the move here. And then some. But surely you just come out. Yep, but then you've unleash this pawn so all the dark squares are now controlled how are we going to continue uh, I guess rook to g6 lovely and now it is mate in two can you see it uh, you can push a pawn I suppose and then the e pawn well, that's not going to be mate in two. We can. We could. Oh, we, can need be, we need to be forcing. We like forcing ways of finishing games. <sighs> oh, you can just sack the queen. Lovely. And then. And then. And then, yes, Rook G1 just gets it done. So it's a very nice finish. And this, um, do you remember in, oh, it was one of our episodes, we talk, you talk, we talked about sort of, you talk, had a silly question about the tempo game, where if you, mm. if, if your opponent could um, yeah, yeah. make next move, then it would like be a draw. Or something. Draw. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. So th this is two, this is why I wanted to do this game, because it draws on. Um, something we talked about in the podcast a few weeks ago. But also, mainly because it's about Leonard Barden. This is one of Leonard Barden's early victories. Uh, it was a correspondence game. Not very sound, but very pretty. Um, I mean, imagine waking up to Queen takes F3 uh, over your breakfast cereal. And that move's just been delivered to you by the postman. So... Uh, yeah, it's um, Mr. Barden is better known as a correspondent, but here is he is playing a correspondence game, and Chris, I'm sure, will tell us more about him when we record episode 19. Can you believe it? We're, we're, we're nearly, uh, I mean, we're, we're now at legal drinking age as a podcast. It's, uh, it's amazing. Anyway, so. Yeah, we'll have another one of these next week to preview episode 20, I am sure. But for now, thank you, John. Hope that was all right. Yeah. Hope you learned yeah, some good stuff. Mm. And uh, we'll see you guys soon.